Today we're welcoming, welcoming Whitman baseball alum and Whitman graduate Anthony Navoso to the program. Uh, Nev, as he's known in many circles, played four seasons for the Blues at Catcher and graduated last spring with a degree in economics. Uh, so Nev, thanks for coming on. How was your Thanksgiving? Yeah, it was good. Had a good Thanksgiving. I actually went to, to Portland to stay with my girlfriend's family and then uh, flew back on Friday to have Thanksgiving with my family. So it was good. Good holiday. How about yourself? Uh, not bad. Just uh, stayed in Walla Walla with my wife and her family. Not, we probably would have done that anyway, but with COVID, it was just, you know, stay home kind of thing. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. So same thing as last year, and I'm sure it'll be the same thing for years to come. <laughs> Absolutely. My parents live in Hawaii, so I, they might make it up at one point, but who knows? We'll see. So That'll be cool. We're going to have a Thanksgiving out in Hawaii then. Yeah, or, yeah, that is an idea. Just go out there. Why, why exactly. <laughs> why deal with it here? Go out there. All right. Um, so the main reason I have you on today is to talk about your soon-to-be lucrative career as a, a pilot. And uh, we would you know, hope, we right? Some of the details. But uh, this has been an interest of yours for most of your life, as you mentioned to me over email. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, honestly, it's been a passion of mine ever since I was a kid playing with, you know, toys and stuff around the house. You know, we used to have like a bunch of toys downstairs in our living room. I'd be playing with stuff like that. And uh, to make a long story short, kind of like, grew to more sophisticated levels as I started to get older with the rise of technology and stuff. They had uh, flight simulators, which were really popular amongst people that were, were trying to get into aviation or trying to have a feel for what it'd be like because aviation in general is a pretty expensive hobby with you know fuel prices, uh, rentals, and then obviously the process of becoming a pilot and training for that is super expensive as it is. Um, so at times it could be inaccessible for, you know, people with difficult financial circumstances and, and things like that. So, uh, I'm fortunate to be in a position right now to be able to, to do that after originally trying in my junior year of high school to start flight training. Um, and then because of baseball and doing all that stuff in high school and getting recruited to go to Whitman, uh, didn't end up working out at that time. So it was just kind of something that I was looking forward to doing and uh, had kind of that plan for after graduation that this would end up being something that I'd want to pursue full time, so. So baseball kind of got in the way there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to say, but I mean, obviously the love of baseball is is just sure. as strong as it is for, for aviation now. So um, so a, a, a good period in my life that that I will cherish forever. So, you know, for those of us, those of us that follow you or Whitman Baseball, or Whitman Athletics on social media, you know, saw you piloted your first solo flight uh, last month, uh, which you mentioned to me earlier was a, a huge milestone. Right. So where, where was that and uh, how was that experience? Tell us about it. Yeah, so that was at uh, the Camarillo Airport. That's where I do my flight training. It's about 25 minutes from where I live in Moore Park, California. Uh, so it's just a quick drive over there for, for my lessons and stuff. And then, you know, when I originally started in 2015, I had a good base of, of flight training and, and experience. Uh, that way, but I kind of started back from scratch a little bit in order to to catch up to speed again. So it, it's been last, I think I started at the end of September, beginning of November with my flight training again. And uh, it was, what was it, a couple of weeks ago that I, I did my solo. So it's been about two months kind of gearing up for that. And that's kind of like what you're, uh, what you're going towards at the initial uh, part of your training is that to eventually be able to fly the plane by yourself. Uh, so that was an awesome experience. I did it on Sunday. It was perfect weather. Uh, couldn't have had it any better in terms of those regards. But um, definitely something I can still probably remember the feelings, sights and sounds, stuff like that. It just kind of like, I'm really doing this by myself. Like I don't really need anybody besides me. Like I could actually do this by myself. So it was definitely a, a really cool experience. And uh, throughout my aviation career, it's something to look back towards and really see the progress that you made with it. So how many times had you gone up before? Um, probably around like 15 times. So is it the same kind of uh, a route or type of flight? Yeah. So it's, uh, when you do your solo initially, it's just uh, in the traffic pattern. So that's when you like take off and you do like a rectangular course around back to the runway in order to land. 
So I did that uh, three times with my instructor so he could have a little peace of mind to know that I'd be okay <laughs> doing it by myself. And then I went up and did it uh, three times with him just sitting on the ramp by the fuel oh, pumps. Oh, fantastic. That's no, awesome. Waiting for me to come back. Hopefully I wouldn't do anything uh, too drastic that would uh, compromise any safety there. But <laughs> but uh, it was a it was a good experience. He had full trust in me and knew that I was I was definitely ready to to take that next step. So now you also mentioned that in a, you know two or three months you hope to have a private pilot certificate. So it's uh, many certifications that will lead up to your work in right, aviation. Right. Um, um, so how how um, talk about that process and how far you're hoping to take it. Yeah, so the initial certification in the process is called the private pilot's license. Some people call it certificate. Um, anyways, fine. But that's the initial license that a lot of people have just in order to be able to fly rec recreationally and be able to, you know, fly kids, family around, go to different places, see new things. Uh, that's what a lot of pilots have. And then it goes up from there. So to be able to fly in conditions that are not optimal, like flying through clouds and stuff like that, you need uh, another certification called the instrument uh, flight certificate. And then uh, you have another certificate in order to be able to fly commercially. So fly for hire, um, then more add-ons, uh, multi-engine to be able to fly bigger, uh, faster planes, and then uh, eventually get hired on by an airline. And then they take you up to speed in order to be able to work uh, for a 121 carrier is what they call in the regulations. So. So those, those are like the regular uh, airlines that we fly on, you know, every day that are being hit pretty hard right now, obviously. So. Mm, absolutely. Is this a career path you want to follow? Do you want to take all those steps? And Yeah, yeah I, I don't know where it's going to be. Obviously, nobody knows how anything's going to go for the next couple of years. I mean, down, uh, sure. Yeah, with the, the pandemic and stuff, everything's been so unpredictable, but um, considering that a lot of the older pilots had to retire due to... Uh, early retirement because of the pandemic that also increased the pilot shortage that was already taking place before the pandemic hit. So um, it actually turned out to be a decent time for me to start really taking this full time seriously, because hopefully by the time I, I get all my certifications and then start flight instructing, which is another certification that you can get in order to build time and experience to be able to get hired on by an airline. Uh, so you'll, you'll get your flight instructor certificate and start, uh, getting experience that way in order to have that time requirement for the airlines and to be able to work by then. So by, by the time all that is said and done, uh, we're hoping that two or three years have passed by and that'll be, uh, a good time that aviation will start picking up again and, and things will start looking like they were pre pandemic life. So. And several years from now, I could. See you. Uh, yeah, you might be on uh, a, a, a commercial flight or airline, <laughs> Alaska Airlines, head back to Walla Walla, and go figure. Anthony Devoso is in the in the right seat, <laughs> flying you back. So, is that a lucrative so, career being a pilot? Uh, it is once you once you get older. Um, definitely six figures and oh. and up in there. Depend. I mean, and there's a bunch of charter charter gigs for for private companies. Mm -hmm. and, people that have their own plans if they're lucky enough to have the, the fortune to be able to afford their own plans and such like that. Um, so there's there's a lot of jobs to be had, hopefully, once this is all said and done and all my training's done and everything gets back to normal like we were accustomed to, so. Sure, sure. Well, uh, you know, lastly, I, I had your former teammates on, uh, Matt Sox and Eric Mon. Right. You know, I asked them, you know, to share their thoughts on, you uh, you know, just playing baseball at Whitman and you guys postseason run in 2019. What are your memories of that postseason and and uh, just your playing career with the Blues? Yeah, a lot a lot of good memories from from being uh, on the Blues baseball team from the 2019 run. Obviously, that's probably the most significant uh, thing that we did in terms of uh, those guys that you talk to and in, in my class going there. Um, it honestly is a blur to me in terms of all the stuff that happened. It kind of happened so quick and and we were playing so well that year. That was just kind of like a, like a dream come true for a lot of us. And to be at that position where a lot of people were counting us out and not, not thinking that we had any sort of chance and to, to prove a lot of people wrong in those respects was, 
was definitely something that I'll I'll remember for a while. Playing in that that championship game, that first game of that championship series was something that I'll remember. Uh, hosing down runners like usual and stuff like that. Those are uh, a lot of a lot of good memories from being on the Blues baseball team. A lot of good bus rides. A lot of good camaraderie. All the all the hard workouts that uh, Coach Tommy and Coach BK would put us through. You know, during my time there, they were all worth it to eventually get to that point where we can look back on it and really be proud of what we accomplished. So, yeah, I mean, it was a tough end of last season for the pandemic, but, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle I'm, I'm gathering this spring, but, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get in on. Yeah. I, I'd love to be able to come out to games this year. I'm hoping for the best for all those guys that, that yeah. continued on with the program that are, I'm excited for them to, to get that, that final shot. Uh, and, and really try to try to make the most of that final season, not like I was supposed to. But it, re it really puts into perspective, like all baseball players say, and that we kind of said during that uh, when the pandemic hit and that we got our games canceled. You know, you really don't know when the end of uh, your baseball career or the end of your season is really going to come. So you have to, you know, take advantage of every single opportunity that you have and make the most of uh, all the time you're out there with your teammates because you never know when it's really going to end. So yeah. a living, a living, breathing example of that. So. <laughs> Sure thing for sure. Um, well, Nev, thanks a lot for coming on. Uh, you know, I really hope this uh, um, piloting career takes off for you. Pardon the pun. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so have a happy and uh, safe holiday season, and uh, we'll uh, see you down the road. All right. Yeah. If I don't talk to you soon, have a have a good holiday to yourself, and uh, hoping to come out and see some games this year. So I'll, I'll probably see you there then. <laughs>